Riders on the storm Into this house we're born Into this world we're thrown Like a dog without a bone And actor out of home Riders on the storm There's a killer on the road His brain is squirming like a toad Take a long holiday Let your children play If you give this man a ride sweet well, I think I got out there in the sometime in the uh, mid-70s, early 70s, and it was always a laid-back, uh, nice, different kind of hippie, uh, Greenwich, early Greenwich Village, uh, but with West Coast style. Killer on the road, yeah. But will the university be ready to meet his ambitions? Will his parents have been sufficiently interested in his future to have concerned themselves with the needs of their universities? We regret to inform you that we are unable to accept your application to... But what happened? How come my parents or the state or the university didn't look ahead? Jim was a very uh, intelligent, bright young man, and uh, behaved himself pretty well, really. And uh, he liked to uh, write and uh, draw pictures. He was an avid reader. He read everything, and then he also wrote. He would write in a he had a book, and he would. This was in high school. He would learn a new word, and then he'd write a whole story around it. So his vocabulary was incredible. He liked all the uh, classics and uh, read everything he could get his hands on. <clears throat> and he was always delighted to go to his grandmother's house because she had a library. One time he just got up out of class and told his teacher he was going to have a brain tumor removed. And he just walked out of class to go read. When he graduated from high school, he asked my parents for the complete works of Nietzsche. <laughs> Most kids want a car. <laughs> that he was in a band. I think it all happened rather quickly. My mom sent me the first album with no note, just the album in a package. And when I opened it, I, 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 I was just astounded that that was my brother on the cover. I think uh, in these days, especially in, in the States, you have to be uh, a politician or an assassin or something to really be a super got a little rock band there and they're making some headway that's fine but when he turned up on the national TV uh, why I was amazed I didn't have any idea of the talent he had as an entertainer I still feel <coughs> that uh, his talent was not vocal as in, in, in the in the classic term but that he was an entertainer the doors, everybody. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day. Try to run, try to hide, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side, yeah. Chased our pleasures here, dug our treasures there. But can we still recall the time we cried? Break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. The reaction I get now, thinking about it, looking back, is that the souls of the ghosts of those 
dead Indians, maybe one or two of them, were just running around, freaking out, and just leaped into my soul. And they're still there. Jim's contribution to music was that Jim was real. Jim was real on stage. Jim was real when he wrote his songs, when he sang his songs in the studio. He was, he was not a performer. He was not an entertainer. He was not a showman. He was a shaman. He was possessed, man. I uh, read a little bit about shamanism. I haven't seen too much of it firsthand, except, you know, what we see uh, with the music and that kind of thing. But in, uh, in tribes, the shaman could be any age, it could be an old man or a young man, but the whole tribe, uh, all ages, uh, kind of tried to push him into his trip and, and uh, listen to him, irregardless. It was just a, a question of a, a certain psychological tendency in an individual. songs are an expression of joy and potency mm. uh, so far. Yeah, maybe. What, what other sort of joy is it that you want to introduce? No, I the mood I get for most of it is kind of a heavy, kind of a sort, sort of gloomy feeling, you know, like, a, a, like of someone not quite at home. Or you know, are not quite, not quite relaxed, and you know, aware of a lot of things, but not quite sure about anything. You know, I'd like to do one, just uh, feeling of being totally at home. Well, you know, I didn't know Jim very well after he left home. We didn't see him much, so I didn't have a chance to uh, really appraise his mental attitude in, in, uh, in his last years.
What's the address here? Um, 8216. 8216. Norton Avenue. Norton Avenue. Yeah, it's right near you. He wanted it with that they were constructions. Uh, it's, it's, uh, what's the apartment number? It's, it's on really the ground floor. She's like, really uh, one of those very hard, like, literary Right in, type right chicks. in the driveway, just pulling the driveway. It's a literary magazine in New York. Yeah, really is there a letter or a number for this apartment? Yeah, just tell me the one you drive here. What's the name? You know, real skinny and little uh -huh. like that. You get to be like a twenty-seven right. or eight. You, know, you get uh, choice there. You're bound to pick uh, out. Mostly in Duke. Yeah. You know? Will you? A little bit. Sure. Hmm. If you keep dancing, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Keep exercising. And do you want some yeah. potato chips? Yeah, a bag of potato the, chips. There's no a lot of Thank places you. to get exercise around here. A large. You would ride a bicycle and walk your eyes in your car. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. in grades. So by the time I was in high school, he was in college. I thought he would have a success because he was smart and uh, creative and could uh, write well. We were delighted he went to college. He started it out in Florida. I wanted to get him to go to graduate school. We had 
met, of course, about the film school at UCLA, and I was looking forward to his graduating and going into Hollywood. So I just thought he would be a beatnik and be poor all his life. <laughs> I even spent one whole night crying about it, worrying that he was, no one was going to ever realize his talent because I knew he wouldn't compromise and become a plumber or I knew he wasn't going to just do anything. Let's talk about the doors. What's um, the difference between a rock lyric and a poem? Well, well, there's really no difference, you know. Jim's book is uh, the same as Jim's lyrics, you know. This, uh, I can read a page and I've heard him sing pretty much the same things, you know, for him. I don't think it's any difference at all. It's, this is written poetry and what he does on stage is spoken poetry. Different from how you write a poem. Mm. It's very similar. Um, I think uh, a lot of poetry is very close to music, except um, when, you're, when you write a poem, often um, you just you have to be in a, in a state of mind that music can put you in with its hypnotic quality. Uh, that leaves you free to, you know, just let the subconscious play itself out wherever, wherever it goes. I really admire poets who can get up with just, uh, with or without a microphone, just in front of a group of people and, and start reciting their poetry. I, I really admire that, but I find it, uh, the music gives me a kind of uh, security that makes it a lot easier to express myself, whereas it's you know kind of hard just to read it dry. Sure. And, so. yeah. I wish I could. I'd like to work on that. playing night after night in clubs, um, we'd start out into a fairly basic song, and then uh, the music would settle into a kind of hypnotic uh, river of sound, which um, would leave me free to kind of make up anything that came into my head at the time. Uh, that's, I think that's, I like songs, but that's the, that's the part of the uh, performance that I enjoy the most, where I have a chance just to um, pick up vibrations from the music and what's coming from the audience and uh, just kind of follow it wherever it, wherever it goes. 
when he ended up in rock music, I was absolutely flabbergasted. Well, he called me on the phone, said he was going on the road with a rock band. And uh, it took me a little bit to gather in what he was really saying, but then, sure enough, that's what it was. And I told him, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that uh, you're, you're not a singer, you can't sing. And I told him, he was, he was really, I said, you are on the wrong track here. Get yourself a job. <laughs> that to me was not a job. <laughs> Rock concerts have always uh, uh, served a function. It gives a lot of uh, people uh, with the same uh, station in life a chance to gather together and kind of uh, assemble and uh, just feel. <clears throat> Uh, the sheer mass of them that exists, the numbers, and you can take that. Uh, really too interested in defining his role in, in society. He's just more interested in um, uh, pursuing his own fantasies. Gonna make it, baby, in our prime. Get together one more. Together, and there's a sense of, of communion, a communal thing. We're all here together, and there's no reason. A lot of energy is dissipated in uh, in the concert, but there's no reason that that same communal kind of thing can't be taken out into the outside world. And ideally, hopefully, that's what a rock, a good rock concert can do. He did say a couple times that he thought that the audience deserved a spectacle. They had paid all that money, and they. It, they came to such a huge arena by the time he was famous that he needed to be a showman. We never had an occasion to see them. They were never in the same area. My dad never stopped to listen. They really never stopped to listen to the music. They more just read about it and heard about it. And um, they didn't really know very much about what he was actually doing. I haven't even heard the lyrics. I've heard the titles like Light My Fire, I, that's about it, and what it goes on after that, I couldn't tell you. I just, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a, a very poor uh, interpreter of his, of his talent. He did tell me one time he didn't want to sing Light My Fire again. <laughs> he didn't want to do what the audiences wanted to hear from him. And when he wanted to do his poetry, they didn't want to listen. So I don't, I don't know if he thought fame was getting him what he wanted. The sheep. 
were hot dead prison. true to his own ambitions, to his own aspirations. And that was his goal in life, and he made, he made it. I would like him to be remembered for his poetry and his music and his, his living his life his way. President of the Greater Miami Crime Commission, I'm calling upon the Dade County Grand Jury and the State Attorney's Office to immediately take criminal action against those that were responsible for the deplorable condition and situation that occurred at the Dade County Auditorium this past weekend when the group known as the Doors, the rock and roll group, attempted to precipitate a riot. This situation is a blot upon our community and those that are responsible for profiting as a result of depravity and immorality as occurred here and where you have children from 9 to 14 years of age being subjected to such obscenities, uh, certainly immediate action is demanded and we are demanding that action this day. Jim, you're facing three and a half years in state prison for the Miami incident. The scope of this trial goes way beyond rock and roll. It's really about the First Amendment. What we're testing down there is the um, issue of artistic freedom of expression, you know, and it, it's a significant issue, and uh, the trial is very interesting. You seem confident. Right. And hopefully it'll be over in time for me to uh, do a European tour. We have taken out two warrants for Jim Morrison. One of them is for indecent exposure. The other is for the use of obscene languages uh, during his performance uh, at Dinner Key Saturday night. We have been delayed on issue of these warrants because we had to wait until we were able to get a copy of uh, recordings that were taken by public-minded uh, people who attended uh, this performance, and also we were waiting, hoping to get pictures that were taken during the performance. I think uh, that nudity is it's really a cyclical phenomenon. I think it, it, it comes, it gets very liberal and extreme, and it goes back, reacts the other way, and it just seems to be a cycle in entertainment. In other words, you feel that the same, uh, the same liberalism performed uh, in the, the theater, acting, uh, should be also generated in, in music? Well, in the realm of art and theater, I, th I do think that uh, there should be complete freedom for the artist and performer. Uh, I'm not personally that uh, convinced that uh, Nudity is always, you know, a necessary part of, uh, you know, a play or a film. But uh, the artist should feel free to use it if he feels. Make their own scene. It was a bad scene, and like I say, it was completely unwarranted, uncalled for in all parts. I uh, think that the exhibition Dinner Key Auditorium Saturday Night was really shocking. And I've, from talking to the kids, they, um, the ones that attended it we're sorry that they did and the ones that didn't were glad and I just want to know if anyone has c the courage enough to stand up and do something about the trash that's bring, being brought into Miami. Uh, I talked to some of the guys that went. Uh, my, I myself did not uh, 
not go to this uh, and not participate because I feel it's not really good entertainment. And I've heard at the doors they got kicked out of other places uh, because of the riots and their um, indecent exposure and, and their, um, their, their talking. And I feel that uh, we have to do something about this. This is, this is real disgusting. And how, my children, if I, when I grow up and have children, do I want them in, a, in an environment like this? I mean, is this progress or uh, are we decaying in a way? I mean, uh, I can't see anything in this. This, uh, to me, is just disgusting. The major reason I went Saturday night is to be with my friends in entertainment. And it didn't seem like actual entertainment that we expected to see. It seemed like very many people were under the influence of drugs. Um, everyone was get, a lot of people were getting busted, caught by policemen under the influence of drugs. And I think that it was not many people enjoyed it. That everyone said that it wasn't worth the money that they didn't, you know, expect any of this at all. Jim Morrison died almost 40 years ago, but he remains a rock legend, the front man for The Doors. He was famous for his music and his lifestyle. He got sideways with the law more than once, including his 1969 arrest in Miami on charges of indecent exposure and public intoxication. But tonight, that part of this legend has been forgiven. Our report from NBC's Mark Potter. Jim Morrison and The Doors exploded onto the music scene in the mid-1960s with the song Light My Fire, now a rock and roll classic. They sold millions of albums around the world, but also found trouble with the law. In a 1969 concert in Miami, a drunken Morrison shouted obscenities at the crowd and threatened to expose himself on stage. While it's been argued for decades whether he actually did that, Miami officials filed charges four days after the concert. We have taken out two warrants for Jim Morrison. One of them is for indecent exposure. John Dinsmore, the Doors drummer, denies Morrison exposed himself and claims he was a political target in the Vietnam War era. The whole country was polarized, kind of like today. Uh, it was for the war or against the war. Getting Jim kind of would put a dent in that movement, and that's what was going on. Jim was a nice guy. Robert Josephsburg, one of Morrison's attorneys, says there were conflicting accounts and no pictures of the alleged incident. If the police had seen him publicly exposing himself, there should have and would have been an arrest, and no one arrested him. There should be complete freedom for the artist and performer. At trial, though, Morrison was convicted and sentenced to six months in jail, which he never served. A year later, while free on appeal, he died in Paris at the age of 27. I respectfully ask my colleagues today to pardon Jim Morrison. Today, four Luther decades Grant, later, I, I the pardon. Florida Clemency Board, led by Governor Charlie Crist, pardoned Morrison, finally clearing one of the biggest names in rock history. Mark Potter, NBC News, Miami. I think Jim went to Paris to escape what he had in the United States, to gain his own freedom, allowing him to do his own writing and experience something new. A friend called and said to my husband, They've, it's on the radio that, you're, that Anne's brother died. You better find out. And it was, it was days later that we heard it. Jim was already buried when we heard it. For a long time, he took it very seriously, what he was going to put on the grave. I went back to my Greek teacher, and I said, uh, what we're looking for is uh, something for the gravestone, which sums up his philosophy. So he put in Greek, um, true to his own destiny or true to his own spirit. And I thought that was just the perfect, perfect thing to put on his grave.
impressed with the f fact that here is, is my son being interred really quite honorably into the great cemetery in Paris. And uh, as you realize how well known and how well liked he was. Losing him was awful. It was just awful. And, and I'm, uh, it took me a long, long time and to get over it. And um, it was hard partly because of the, all the speculation that maybe he wasn't dead. Deep in your heart, you thought, oh, well, he would have done something like that. Um, it's possible. Maybe he did just want to get away and have a new life, and he'll turn up later. So even though I pretty much believed he was dead, it, it left a little opening. up. Um, Jim's presence was in the room with us when the two of us were together and getting high with her was just the natural thing to do. She was into heroin. Iggy Pop was into heroin. Um, I had just done it and fallen in love with it and it was it was around in the early 70s Laurel Canyon. Cocaine and heroin, two white powders were all over the place and a lot of people died. He passed 50 years of living into, into you know, that uh, that period uh, in the doors from 22 to 27 and he paid for it. The moral is, is that you live like Jim Morrison, you die like Jim Morrison. It was shortly after the recording of their last album that Jim Morrison took off for vacation and never came back. He moved to Paris with his girlfriend, Pamela Corson, and he died there under circumstances that have never been made clear. Do you not suggest in the book that it was Pamela who gave him the heroin that eventually led to his death? Pam was a heroin addict. I think Jim OD'd from heroin. Uh, Jim was an alcoholic. They were together in Paris. Um, Pam felt responsible for Jim's death. He probably didn't even know what it was. And like most people who do heroin uh, for the first time, he got real sick and uh, went to the bathroom to take a bath. And the hot water, you know, the condition he was in physically, uh, knowing Jim, he was probably drunk by midnight already anyway, and uh, the heroin in concert with those, uh, those other elements did him in, and he, he never woke up. Well, basically, he was a good man. He, he's a good, solid citizen. He had, he had moral and, and ethical standards that were very high, and uh, uh, I, I think it... Uh, he, he was just somebody you would be like to know. Take a long 